Hello, everybody. Welcome to The Political Vigilante. My name is Graham Elwood. Yeah, that's what you're doing. You're making Gotham great again by watching this show and not the liars on the corporate media. So I'm sure you heard uh, over the weekend that Ellen DeGeneres was, you know, giggling it up uh, with George W. Bush and the W we know stands for war criminal at a football game. And then this was her response, I think two days later on her cute little daytime talk show. So I want to talk about something that happened this weekend. I know it's Tuesday. Sometimes I like to ruminate on things all day Monday so that on Tuesday you, you hear about it. Um, so uh, this weekend I went to Dallas uh, for the Cowboys game. And uh, yeah, so uh, thanks. And um, it may not seem like a big deal for a celebrity to attend a football game, but uh, I never leave my house. So it is a big deal. I, I go through the drive through at uh, Wendy's, so I only uh, have to see one she's person. She's just one of I'm, us. That kind of person. So there were 100,000 people in this stadium. Beautiful stadium, by the way, that Dallas has. Um, so Portia and I were invited by Charlotte Jones. She's the daughter of Jerry Jones, who owns the Dallas Cowboys. And uh, we went because we wanted to keep up with the Joneses. <laughs> um, So anyway, so we get to sit in this very fancy suite because, you know, he owns the, the whole place. So his suite is, is fancy, and he's got fancy friends. And I don't mean fancy like real housewife fancy. I mean like fancy. Look, this is, I took a video of who, who was next to me. Oh, look at her in a luxury box with the other members of the ruling class. In a stadium that cost $1 billion. Pretty sure there's still homeless people in Dallas. Hey, there's George W. Bush. Everybody clap. Isn't that cute? Yeah. Oh. Fancy. Normalizing so, a war criminal. Isn't it really fantastic when a Hollywood so celebrity Portia, does this? And that was Charlotte Jones, uh, Portia was talking to, and George W. Bush, and then in front of us was the tallest man in the world. <laughs> and, um, so I've got to say, uh, when we were invited, uh, I was, you know, I was aware that it, I was going to be surrounded with people from very different views and beliefs. And I'm not talking about politics. I was rooting for the Packers, and uh, get this, everybody in the Cowboys suite was rooting for the Cowboys. And so I had to hide my cheese hat in Porsche's purse. And um, don't get me wrong, I, I, I like the Cowboys. I love the Cowboys. I love all the village people, as a matter of fact. Um, <laughs> But, but Aaron Rodgers is a friend of mine. He's the quarterback for the Packers. And so uh, I'm sitting in the, in the Cowboys suite, the owner of the Cowboys, and secretly cheering every time the Packers scored or every time another whistleblower came forward. And uh, <laughs> the referees, you guys, the referees. Um, but during the game, they showed a shot of George and me laughing together. And uh, so. People were upset. They thought, why is a gay Hollywood liberal sitting next to a conservative Republican president? Didn't even notice I'm holding the brand new iPhone 11. And, um, <laughs> but a lot of people were mad, and they did what people do when they're mad. They tweet. And, uh, but here's one tweet that I loved. This uh, person says, Ellen and George Bush together makes me have faith in America again. And, um, Ellen and George Bush together makes me have faith in America again. That's what somebody tweets. That's the tweet she just decided to pick out. Isn't it cute? She just went to a football game, happened to be sitting next to a president. Hey, I'm a, I'm a liberal gay person from Hollywood, she just said. He's a conservative Republican president. Right? Doesn't it all seem fine? Like, just, hey, this is what happens at football games. Right? So I want to talk about something that happened this weekend. I know. So she later goes on to say, um, I just think we should be kind to one another. Well, first of all, let's not forget, this is from July 2013, George W. Bush's forgotten gay rights history defended his party. Uh, he defied his party by endorsing civil unions in 2004, but that same year he backed a constitutional amendment forbidding same-sex marriage, right? So you could bring that up with Ellen DeGeneres, who's an openly gay woman, right? You could bring that up and say, hey, Ellen, why are you playing nice? Well, we have different points of view. So she takes this very nice stance, I'm a daytime talk show host, let's all be kind to one another. Well, well, that's a fantastic sentiment. But he's a war criminal. He lied about weapons of mass destruction to get us into an illegal war in Iraq. They killed over a million Iraqis, thousands of American soldiers, tens of thousands of Americans have come home with various types of uh, PTSD, of physical wounds, brain injury, all this stuff. 22 vets a day commit suicide. 
So it's a little more than just let's be kind. It's not like he's some conservative uncle and hey, you know what, we always watch football together so we just leave politics at the door. This is more than that, Ellen. But, but why is Ellen normalizing him so much? Is she just really wants the world to be a kind place or has she been kind of helping the State Department and the CIA? Wait, what? No. There's no way a Hollywood person would be involved in that. WikiLeaks says otherwise. This was sent to me by... <laughs> Susie Dawson pointed this out, and uh, this was on uh, Tiffany, I believe her last name, Tiffany Fitzhenry's uh, timeline on Twitter. She's been very good at exposing Hollywood uh, for ties to the State Department and sex trafficking and all this awful stuff. She's shown numerous um, documentation to show that George Clooney is like a CIA asset. So here's what's interesting about Ellen DeGeneres. See, see how I talk about the corporate media? There's six companies that own 95% of all media, and they get their talking points from the State Department. This is United, unclassified U.S. State Department, okay? This got unclassified in uh, 2015. While Ellen does not spend many shows dealing with serious foreign policy issues, she does use her show to support important causes and raise money for them. Further, her show is syndicated internationally in 10 countries, including Canada, Australia, and India. She is a big supporter of Hillary Clinton and is willing to use her platform to help promote the agenda of the new Secretary of State. Hillary Clinton became Secretary of State in 2009 when Obama was sworn in. Isn't that weird? She's not, this isn't Hillary running for office and you could make an argument, hey, a person with a TV show is supporting a, a specific political candidate. So they're, have, they're gonna promote that candidate. Oh, wow. There's all, see all these, these veils of plausible deniability? Oh, Graham, you're a crazy conspiracy theorist. No, 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 this is unclassified documents that have been on WikiLeaks. But we all know WikiLeaks is suspect because they've had, oh, that's right, zero redactions, zero. There is not one single publication on the face of the earth that can make that claim. But that's why Julian Assange is in jail. Here's another WikiLeaks with Ellen DeGeneres in LA, okay? Release in full. This is from Miles CD at the State Department, right? I spoke with her and she said she would do whatever we asked and so full speed ahead. Subject, Ellen DeGeneres in LA. October 2011. Hillary not running for office. This is when Hillary was Secretary of State. You might remember when she was Secretary of State. There was 20 countries that donated to the Clinton Foundation prior to her becoming Secretary of State. When she became Secretary of State, wacky coincidence, all 20 countries got defense contracts. Isn't that crazy? Ellen DeGeneres is helping with that. Right? In 1997, when Ellen DeGeneres came out of the closet, the CIA, like, uh got all these red flags, they were tracking her and all of the like angry homophobic rhetoric that came out when she came out of the closet. I applauded her for coming out of the closet, good for her. Why would the CIA be concerned that some Hollywood star comes out of the closet? Dozens of people had come out of the closet prior to her and since. So I'm not sitting here saying, she, oh, this proves she's a CIA asset. At the very least, the CIA came to her and said, hey, will you pu push this point and that point and this point? She goes, yep. Isn't it weird, these people that have all this success then say these things? I've talked about this before. Remember when I showed that William Morris and UTA, those two big agents, or I'm sorry, CAA and UTA, those two big agencies represent all the same people, Stephen Colbert, Anderson Cooper, right? Bill Clinton, Hannah speaking, you, you see it? So we, they make it seem like it's coming from all these different places, but it is not. It is not. And who owns Ellen DeGeneres' show? Well, right here, Sony Pictures Television owns her show. Do you remember when the hacked leaked Sony emails came out. What the mainstream media focused on was all the sort of salacious like, oh, this executive was, you know, bad mouthing this celebrity. That's what they focused on because they didn't want to focus on this Sony email. I can or should see in New York regarding anti-Russian messaging and also anti-ISIL messaging. This is from an email, an internal email within Sony.
Sony pushing in 2014 anti-Russian messaging and anti-ISIS messaging. Why is Sony pushing that? They make daytime TV shows and the Spider-Man movies. Oh, and by the way, they push State Department talking points. That makes total sense, doesn't it? Right? So this is why we can't trust Ellen. So when she puts on that little golly geo shucks, I just was having football with a buddy of mine and we have different points of view. What was also disappointing was then Tulsi Gabbard's tweet. The Ellen Show message of being kind to all is so needed right now. Yeah, Tulsi, I agree with that. Enough with the divisiveness. We can't let politics tear us apart. There are things we will disagree on strongly and things we agree on. Let's treat each other with respect, aloha, and work together for the people. I tweeted, let's all be kind to each other, unless, of course, if you're in Iraq or Afghanistan, then Bush and Obama just bomb the crap out of you. I, I'm, I'm, this is disheartening for me because I like Tulsi, right? But what I want to make clear here, two things. One, Bernie has tweeted things and said stuff I don't agree. He's call, calling Putin a dictator. I hate it when he says stuff like that. So one thing I've always said, nobody gets a free pass. No one, I'm not giving anyone a free pass. Not Bernie, not Tulsi, not anybody. I still want Bernie to be president. I would love for Tulsi to be VP or vice versa. But there's still plenty to be critical of. And if you support somebody like Tulsi, don't blindly support her and then just go nuts anytime someone's critical of her. Don't do that, nor should you also overreact. See a tweet like this and just go, I'm done, she sold us all out. Don't do that either. You can say, you can, you can have both. You can say, I like the fact that Tulsi's anti-interventionist stance is something I really resonate with. I like the fact that she drew up the, the off act. I really like that. I'm a little... I have some reservations about her kind of sounding like she's backpedaling on Medicare for All. Now, apparently she's going to come out with some interview soon talking about her single player plus is what she's calling it. Okay, if you have a plan that's better than Medicare for All, I'm all ears. If it has anything about, well, we got to keep private insurance and I see that you're taking money from them through opensecrets.org, then you're going to lose me. But right now... This kind of thing is like, Tulsi, you're missing the boat. You made a mistake here. I'm not going to, we don't need to go crazy and say she's awful, nor do we need to defend this tweet. It's, 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 it's disappointing. But let's not forget Bernie Sanders, you know, don't attack John McCain, right? He said that. John McCain uh, really helped with a lot of war, right? Fiorella from the Convo Couch, who I really, I like everybody over the Convo Couch. They're very much... They're very much in the pro-Tulsi camp. Good for them. I had Peter Frederick on my show. I took a lot of crap for that. <laughs> and I'm glad I had him on the show. Watch the interview. Like what he says. Don't like what he says. Make your own decision. Come to your own conclusion. Um, she pointed this out. When he said this, it broke me, but I'm still voting him. Talking about Bernie Sanders saying, oh, George H.W. Bush, Bush Sr., who started the first Iraq war and was the head of the CIA before he became vice president... <laughs> Let's not forget, had Hillary won in 2016, we would have had 32 out of 40 years with either a Bush or a Clinton in the White House or VP spot. Just to point that out. If we want to say we're not an oligarchy, let's bring that up. So Fiorella brings this up, and I give Fiorella credit for this. She said, when he broke this, it broke me, but I'm still voting for him, which is what she's saying about you can, you, you can have that stance on Tulsi. Look, Elizabeth Warren gushing about Herbert Walker Bush. He was an American patriot and bing, bang, boom, and this, that, and the other thing, right? But then Sarah Abdullah, who I follow very highly on, on uh, I got a lot of respect for her. I don't know her personally. I just follow what she posts. She's very, she calls herself like a Lebanese geopolitical analyst. She writes this, didn't realize rightfully pointing out that George Bush is a genocide or war criminal that has the deaths and displacement of millions of Afghanis, Iraqis, Pakistanis, Somalis, Palestinians, and Lebanese on his head was divisive. <laughs> and then someone who I don't know wrote, Ellen is worse than those women who fell in love with Richard Ramirez. That made me laugh out loud. <laughs> and then there's this tweet talking about Tulsi. And again, there's a lot about, I uh, about her I like. Um talking about the spirit of aloha. Overall, I agree with that. But I'm sorry, George Bush um, lied us into an illegal war in Iraq. And you, Tulsi, of all people, 
who the whole, your whole message is anti-interventionism because you went over there. You saw your friends, some of them not come home. I'm sure you've had friends commit suicide. So when Savage Joy, who I've been on her show, tweeted this, it really resonated with me. Tulsi Gabbard, I don't have aloha for George W. I have aloha for my aunt who found my cousin Jay, her son, after he shot himself in the head because of PTSD from three tours in Iraq. 22 vets a day commit suicide because of people like George Bush and Dick Cheney and Don Rumsfeld and Jill Biden and Obama and Bill Clinton and Hillary Clinton. So I can't be all cuddly with them, especially from someone that is a uh, asset for the State Department. That's why do you think she has a big successful show? If she came out and called George W. Bush a war criminal, I wonder how much longer she'd have her show. Remember when Bill Maher did Politically Incorrect? And after 9-11, he, he called the guys in the, the drone that flew the drones, he called them cowards. His show got canceled. Then he got his mind right. Now he's pushing, uh, he's just a, you know, a pro-choice Republican on TV. Because I can't forget this. This is Guantanamo Bay. This is people getting tortured. This happened under George Bush. See this? This is offensive. This is offensive to me. Here's a female soldier. Thumbs up. Should we... She didn't really give a lot of aloha to this guy that was tortured right there, did she? How about this much aloha or divisiveness or be kind? How kind were we when these are civilian deaths? 2003, 12,000, 4, 11,000, 16,000 in 2005. Six, 2006 and 2007 were the peak of civilian deaths. Look at this. The first couple years of Obama in office, oh, we were only at the five and 4,000 mark of civilian deaths. And then... He pulled the troops out, off out of Iraq, which was what he said he was going to do his campaign promise. Good for him. Oh, but he upped the drone striking. So, ooh, more civilian deaths. So, Ellen, you work for the CIA or the State Department. At the very least, you're just, you're, if they tell you to push something, you'll do it. I've called that out. That's why I'm doing a TV show in an apartment. <laughs> I'm not on a big fancy soundstage. I got fired for speaking the truth two years ago. If you are neutral on situations of injustice, you have chosen the side of the oppressor. That's a quote from Desmond Tutu. I'm sorry. Until we call out these genocidal <laughs> war criminals for who they are, I'm all for being aloha with, I'll be, let's, let's try to unite conservative voters. I'll be, uh, let's try to unite because the ruling class wants us divided. I'll reach out to a friend or relative that's a conservative that even voted for Trump and I would go to a football game with them and talk and even talk politics and just try to understand and want them to maybe try to understand me. If any, if I have any friends or relatives that killed tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of civilians, I wouldn't go to a football game with them. But I don't know, maybe free tickets are worth that much. Maybe free tickets in a TV show are worth your soul. If wars can be started by lies, they can be stopped by truth. That's Julian Assange said that. We've all were lied to by George Bush. We are, every war is a lie. We are lie. The, most people don't want to go to war. We, they have to lie to us to put us into war. If you read Chris Hedges' Death of the Liberal Class, Woodrow Wilson hired George Creel to get America to get behind World War I. Did you know this? I didn't until I read that book. I was told World War I, we were all gung-ho for it. No, we were not. The American people did not. They called it, it already started in Europe, and they called it Wall Street's War. In 1915, they did that. They were calling it Wall Street's War. And then we hired, uh, Woodrow Wilson hired George Creel to come up with the Creel Commission, and he used media to sell it. The media at the time, radio, magazines, newspapers, and this very new medium, motion pictures. There's a famous black and white movie. I studied this in film school in college. It's one of the first black and white films. It's about the Kaiser, how evil the German Kaiser was. That song over there, over there, that was written. That was a marketing jingle. The war to end all wars. That was a marketing slogan. That was telling everybody we have this final world war and we'll never have another one again. That was in 1915. I think we've had a couple of wars since then. Gee, I don't know, we're in eight or nine now, I've lost track. 
normalizing these people. This is the problem I have with the Hollywood neoliberals. First of all, at the very, the best case scenario, you have people like Kathy Griffin who are just rich and privileged. She's a rich, privileged Hollywood white lady living in a $10 million mansion. There's photos of her with Donald Trump, yay! A couple years ago when he was a big, like, the rich always protect each other. And now we know through WikiLeaks that some of these Hollywood celebrities are State Department mouthpieces. That's why they're given all of this A-list celebrity status. In the end, we will remember not the words of our enemies, but the silence of our friends. That was from Martin Luther King Jr. I'm going to call this out because you're not going to see anybody in the mainstream media talking about this, are you? Is Rachel Maddow talking about this? Jake Tapper, are they talking about this? No, they're not. So you come here to get your news and information. Thank you so much. YouTube is trying to censor me because I won't play ball. I won't be a mouthpiece to the war machine and the ruling class. So I need your help. This show is completely supported by you, the viewers. So go to patreon.com slash Graham Elwood or rockfin.com slash Graham Elwood. It's a blockchain cryptocurrency platform. And make sure you hit the subscribe button. YouTube is unsubscribing people at an alarming rate. My numbers are actually going down, which is completely impossible, <laughs> which shows you that they are censoring me. So uh, share these videos, put comments in the comment section, and thank you so much for watching the show.